Verse 10, And he saith unto me, the angel says to him, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Ah, so the angel tells John, don't seal whatever is said in the prophecy of this book. Why? For the time is at hand. Now people should know. Don't close off prophecy to the people. They should now know. The time's at hand. But God told Daniel to shut it up. Look at Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. We're going to look at the book of Daniel chapter 12. So John is told that he's supposed to not seal. He's supposed to break off the seal and then let it loose. The seal has been broken off because something was sealing it before. So, the prophecy of this book. This book, Revelation, you got to realize this. It wasn't actually one book, Revelation. It was basically prophecy itself. Daniel was writing the first half of this. And then the second half was covered by John. So you got to realize that Revelation is basically part uh, the book of 2 Daniel, so to speak. You got to realize what Daniel was writing was the book uh, was the first uh, was first Revelation, and John was write, writing second Revelation. It was known as prophecy, because look at Daniel chapter twelve. Uh, verse 4, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the what? End. So all the way to the end, the book had to be sealed. Look at verse 8, And I heard, but I understood not. Daniel didn't know, but God knew. Then said I, O my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till when? Time of the end. Right? But then Revelation chapter 22, verse 10, he's, it says, Seal not, for the time is what? Not yet, but the time is at hand. The time is at hand. That's what you got to understand. All right, go back to Revelation chapter 22. That's why it's very possible that this book that was sealed, that was finally unsealed, was that mysterious book that was sealed at Revelation chapter 5. Remember that mysterious book at Revelation 5 and Revelation 6? And we were wondering what it was? A lot of people think that it's the King James Bible, which is very possible. It could be the Bible itself. But it also strongly points out to the book of Revelation itself. It's this prophecy book over here. Because why? Because uh, God had to continue his prophecy. But this is great evidence to a Jew where the New Testament is part of the Bible, not just the Old Testament. Because who is filling up that second half for Daniel then? Who is completing that? There's a leftover in the book of Daniel. Had to be completed right here. All right, let's look at verse 11. Now, this one can be a good sermon, all right? He that is unjust. All right, if you're not just, let him be unjust still. God's saying, then remain that way. Be unjust. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. That's self-explanatory. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. But if you're righteous, then what? Remain righteous forever. And he that is holy... Let him be holy still. That's self-explanatory. All right, now there are modern versions and brilliant, bright intellectual scholars who go by manuscripts saying, well, basically it's saying that if you're unjust, then become just. And if you're filthy, then it's a time to become righteous. No, that's not what the verse is saying. The verse is saying here, if you're going to remain a sinner, then you're going to become even more of a sinner. And if you're going to be holy, then you're going to become more holy. You know what that means? That shows over here, there's no repentance here. There's no change over here. Time is up. God is not inviting the unjust person to become just. He's saying once you're unjust, you remain unjust that way forever. 
Why? Because of uh, Revelation 21, verse 8. We pass that. The fearful, unbelieving, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You got to understand that in eternity, sinners will remain sinners. There, there's a point of no return. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Do you see why soul winning is important right now? But when you're holy, you cannot lose it. Once you're saved by the blood, you're once saved, always saved, you're saved. Holy, you're up there. You remain that way. So time will be no more over here. So you better start getting to work. All right? You better start getting to work and telling sinners about the plan of salvation. And those of you who are not saved in Jesus Christ right now would be a great time. Because you don't want, the last thing that you'd want to hear is God saying, if you want to re reject my son, then reject my son forever. All right, let's go back over here at verse 12. But that should be an encouragement to us too at verse 11, right? If you're going to be holy, bless God, man, you're going to be holy for all eternity. Amen. Forever. You can't unholy it. <laughs> all right, let's look at verse 12. And behold, all right, so behold is like, listen up, right? Attention, so that's the idea. And behold, I come quickly. <laughs> I like how Jesus says that, verse 7 and verse 12. He doesn't just say, I come quickly. He says, behold, that means what? Look. A lot of people aren't looking for the rapture. Behold, look, I come quickly. I'm coming. And my reward is with me. He's coming with his rewards, my friend. So remember, since this is talking about the coming of Jesus Christ, then it would consist, then, and he's bringing his rewards, this can be applicable in two senses. One is the Christians where we're raptured before the tribulation, and then uh, he has his rewards ready for us. It also refers to when Jesus Christ comes down uh, during the tribulation, a post-tribulation rapture for tribulation saints, and then he has his reward system ready for them during the millennium. All right, let's keep reading. So, verse 12, he's coming quickly to bring his reward to give every man according as his, as his work shall be. That's something you want to underline and know about, about your reward system. It is a quality system, not quantity. Your reward is according as God, how will God give the reward? Every man according as his work shall be. It's according to the work that you do for him. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, which should definitely be noted, the God will reward them according to what sort it is. The fire shall try every man's work of what sort, of what sort, of what sort it is. So I don't care if you led 10,000 souls to salvation, what's the quality behind it? Was the quality behind it uh, pride showing off? It's to build up numbers? Uh -oh. Then your quality stinks. It doesn't matter how many souls you let salvation. Now that, that will preach, but I'm not going to preach on that, all right? Verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega. All right, remember, Alpha and Omega are beginning and last letters of the Greek alphabet. So Jesus is saying, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, that's self-explanatory. The first and the last, that's self-explanatory. Jesus is always is from the beginning to the end of time. He's always there. Verse 14, this is proof that there is a work system for salvation. Blessed are they, blessed are who? They that do His commandments. You're blessed if you do His commandments that they may have right to the tree of life, so you have access and a right to the tree of life if you keep His commandments and may enter in through the gates into the city, so that you can enter into the gates of the city. Now, do you remember Revelation 22 and chapter 21? Remember, is if you keep... The idea is, is that people have access to the tree of life. They have access to this tree of life and they have access to the gates of the city which is divided into 12 and then the fruits of the tree is also divided into 12 as well. You all remember that? 
Why? Because these people have access in their own divisions. But in order to have that kind of access is based off of what? It is based on your works. Your works. Now, is this applicable to the Christian church? No, because our salvation is not by keeping the commandments. It's by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're keeping the commandments for your salvation, you're going to go to hell, my friend. The ones who are keeping his commandments are those who are the millennial saints, the people who are entering eternity, the people who are born and who are entering eternity. This is all based on a work system over here. People who try to deny it are typical people who are 60 years old and they look like they're going to give up the ghost dying of cancer and they're wearing sweatshirts. And the only joy that they ever have in their life is when they see a Bible-believing preacher slip up or mess up and they want to critique. And, then, and the ones who are the bigger losers are the ones who listen to them and subscribe and follow them. And that's the only joy that they have in their life. So these... So uh, you have to be an incredible blind idiot, honestly, if you're going to deny that verse where it says you're doing works for your salvation. How do you go around that interpretation? Read it as it says. You have access to the tree of life and entering to that gates of the city if you keep his commandments. Blessed are you when you do that. That's works for salvation over there. So salvation by works over here that's why it's important to understand this honesty if you don't understand this honesty and you're in self-denial then what's going to happen is is that when these cults start using these verses and there are cults who use these kind of verses you have to do the commandments for your salvation and then you're in self-denial stage no how i read it is faith alone i don't know how you read that then the cults are not going to listen to you and they think you're twisting scripture. And rightfully so, because you're being dishonest. But imagine that you tell that cult person, look at that passage, that's in the book of what? Revelation, what time period is that? That's right here. This is the time period. We're not here. You know where we're at? We're already raptured to heaven. We're taken care of. It's a done deal, but not the people down here. See? So you got to understand that. 